Hello everybody, my name is Nicola O'Brien and I'm one of the lead educators at Grok Academy. Welcome to this video series, which is to support teaching cybersecurity in the primary school years. If you have any questions about today's recording, please send us an email to help at grokacademy.org and we'd be happy to provide more information for you. Before we get underway, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land where I am recording today, the Camaragal people. I'd like to recognise the First Nations people of Australia as this country's original teachers and holders of knowledge. This video refers to a range of classroom activities, both online and unplugged. At the end of the video, we will provide links so that you can access all of these activities and explore them for yourself. We'd like to thank Google for their funding, which enabled us to create these videos and make them available to you. This funding is part of the CS Educator PD Grants Program in 2021. Big thanks to Google. In this session, we're exploring cryptography. And the key learning here is about how is data kept secret and safe? Now, in some of the previous activities we've looked at, um, and often in teaching cybersecurity at primary school level, we're looking at things like keeping information private or choosing secure passwords. When we look at cryptography, we're looking at a slightly more technical topic and we'll have a range of activities so students can really engage with the idea of securing information and why that's an important thing to do. We'll present some activities and provide you with an opportunity to explore them in this session. One of the things that we think is really important to emphasize with students when you look into cryptography is that what we're teaching here are very much the underlying principles. So we'll see ways that we can make information difficult to read by taking it out of plain text and putting it into an encrypted message. Now, obviously the technology used in computers is far more complex and far more difficult to unravel and crack, but exploring cryptography with primary school students is a really fun way to introduce the idea of keeping information secret as it travels and it's stored and sent. We've created a range of activities and the first unplugged activity I'll talk about is something called a Caesar cipher. Now, this is an easy activity to explore with students. Um, we provide an activity which I will show you now, um, where we provide a cutout of a Caesar cipher wheel. Um, these two wheels are attached together and allow you to cycle through the alphabet. And at its heart, a Caesar cipher works by encoding a message by translating each letter by a set number of spaces. For example, if I pick a key of three, each letter in my message will be substituted for the letter which is three letters forward in the alphabet. So an A would become a D, for example, and a B would become an E. Uh, we provide instructions to step through this process in our worksheet so that students can send and receive secret messages. Um, over the course of the worksheet, as you can see, we provide, I think there are seven secret messages. So students have a chance to, first of all, discuss what a cipher is and the Caesar cipher in particular. And then they have multiple opportunities to apply that learning in different messages. You can see from the worksheet here that a number of the boxes are shaded in gray. And by working through all of the messages in the activity, students can finally um, unravel a secret message by combining those gray box letters at the end to complete the activity. Uh, if time allows, we'd also recommend, and we've provided some space here so that students can have a go creating their own messages to send to a friend um, and to select a key and have a go at encoding and decoding messages. What is, what is important here to speak to students about and one of the key learnings and outcomes in this activity, I'll just get back to my slides, um, is that we want students to see that it's important to hide information and keep it secure when transmitting data through a network or on the internet. Um, this is a nice, opportunity to introduce to students some basics of how in information travels around the internet. 
So students can see that when they send information such as a search request um, or a request to a service like Netflix for what they would like to watch, uh, that that message may be handed through several computers, several different networks across the world to reach its endpoint destination. And that's important that that information is sent securely particularly when we're talking about sensitive personal information like bank account details or identifying information like our name and date of birth or, for example, a password. Um, the other key learning outcome in this unplugged activity is to understand that we use algorithms to hide information. So we follow a set of instructions. In the example of our Caesar cipher, we use the rotation mechanism. And if we follow that set of instructions, we will be able to conceal our message and make it no longer readable in plain text. Um, and that we also use algorithms to decode that information and make it visible again. Another fun activity that we provide for you to have a look at without being on computers is called the Tech Trek. Um, this is a scavenger hunt style activity that you can run around your school. Um, if you're in a remote learning environment, we also have a version available on the website that can be adapted to use at home. And in it, we use a number of different techniques or algorithms um, or ways of concealing information for students to have a go. We, there's an example of Morse code. There are some riddles. There's even a uh, binary pixel activity. And students can explore in a very quick and fun way, uh, a number of different techniques to conceal information and use that to solve clues to navigate around either their classroom and school or through their home. So let's pause now for a moment and we will have a look at the online activity that we've provided to support teaching cryptography. In our online activity for students, we begin with um, another example of, of a Caesar cipher. So in the interface here, uh, instead of turning a wheel around, we have a drop down where students can enter a key. So how many spaces, sorry, how many characters around the alphabet we're rotating by to try and decode this message. And with a little bit of trial and error, or in my case, trial, because I know the answer, um, we can try a key, uh, enter it, we can reveal the message meet at the park, and I can come across here and record what the secret key is and mark my answer. So that builds some familiarity and linkage between the unplugged and online activities. Um, and then we move into another type of cryptography. And we introduce students to the idea, what if the letters are jumbled up, but not in a smooth or, you know, um, predictable pattern where each letter has been rotated by the same number of characters. What if it's just a big jumble? And we call this a mixed substitution cipher. Uh, we have a couple of problems for students to work through. And what I really like about this activity is that initially it seems quite daunting because we don't have an algorithm here to work out how to start decoding this, um, but maybe we do. So in this example, we talk about letter frequency a little bit and we say, well, we know that the is the most common word in the English language. And we can see in our pattern of letters here, um, L, Z, V is repeated twice. That's a three letter word. So we can start applying what we already know about the English language by choosing from these drop downs. And we can say that L is a T, Z, is an H and V, let's have a guess that might be an E. And you can see that it's starting to populate my decrypted message here, the something, something, the, and on we go. Um, and here we can start to look at words and guess or predict what the words might be. So I can see H something T and um, it can't be an E, could be hot, could be hit. Let's have a go, we'll try it with an A. So we're going to swap out F for an A. And this is starting to look something familiar, the something at, something, the hat, at, and on we go. So students um, really enjoy this activity because they can start from feeling maybe a little bit, where do I start? What do I do? And applying what they already know about the English language, they can start to unscramble this message and 
um, enjoy that experience. Now, this widget here is available too. So if you wanted to, you could um, put some other text in there and have a go at playing around with substitutions on your own. Um, the next problem follows the same idea, um, and it's an even longer message for students to work at. And again, we give us a couple of clues here to get students started. We tell them that um, HTD is the word you um, and give them two other clues and they can get underway and have a look at a different algorithm or a different way of uh, decrypting a message so that it's visible. So if we have a look at these slides, we've covered the online activity now. And you can see the learning outcomes between the unplugged and the plugged or online activities are fairly similar. Um, some algorithms are more complicated than others, but knowing something about the data gives give us some extra information and help us to decode. Um, and we also want students to understand that algorithms on the internet need to be very secure, much more secure than the ones we've used today to protect our information. Um, we know the power of computing means that you know, computers are able to do what we call brute force, which is run through every possible solution to a password or some other data to try and unjumble a message. And so the encryption techniques used online in the real world are more and more complicated and ever increasing in sophistication. So uh, in terms of supporting resources and what to do next, We'll provide links at the end of the video so that you can access those online and unplugged activities. They're part of the school cybersecurity challenges. So we have a range of cybersecurity activities that you can jump into and use. They're free for Australian students in years three and above. Um, some activities are specifically designed for primary school students. We do have a full length encryption challenge, um, which you are welcome to take a look at. It is a challenge which also teaches programming using a language called Python. So personally, um, I would recommend that one as being more suitable to high school students, but it does include some of those widgets that we've looked at. So you can, if you have students who are particularly keen in the upper primary school years, you could take a look at that. Another resource I'd like to highlight is our curriculum unpacking page. Uh, what this does, it unpacks the Australian curriculum. Uh, the version you see on screen is version eight and it breaks it down into the core concepts and lets you look into what those concepts look like across the year levels, provides you with examples. I will be continuing to update this resource as version nine of the Australian curriculum comes online. Um, and as we discussed in an earlier one of these sessions, there are some additional curriculum linkages related to cybersecurity, which will be wrapped up into our unpacking resource. As I mentioned, um, the activities you've seen today are part of a whole suite of cybersecurity activities that we have, all available online, um, covering topics such as information privacy and security, phishing and scams, web application security, and more. Uh, one thing to highlight for primary schools is that twice a year we run Grok CyberComp, which is a free online competition. It's a time session, so students have 45 minutes to work through 12 questions. Um, they don't know the results on the spot, so they submit their answers at the end and teachers receive detailed information on how their students have gone uh, and the students will receive um, detailed information once the competition finishes. That's a really fun way to engage with some of these activities and put it into your planning for the year's activities. Um, other things you can access, obviously, we have a range of classroom posters, so if your room looks um, like it could do with some brightening up, they have some really great tips on there for students to improve their security behavior, things like how to avoid scams and tips for passwords. So there's a wealth of resources available from Grok Academy. Um, you're welcome to download them or access the free online activities. Uh, we're also um, on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. So please follow us and stay up to date with what we're doing. And as I mentioned at the beginning, um, at any time, send an email to help at Grok Academy org and our friendly team are happy to answer questions and get back in touch with you. So thank you for joining us today. Um, it's hope these resources are useful to you. Please continue to use them. Uh, good luck and please let us know how you get on teaching cybersecurity for the primary years. Thank you.